in Guinea Conakry, ex dictator Musa Dadis Kamara was recaptured and returned to prison on Saturday, hours after an apparent jailbreak led by heavily armed commandos. Two other former officials on trial alongside Dadis Kamara over a 2209 massacre during his presidency were also set free during Friday's escape. Reporter Karim Kamara has details. According to the Chief of Army Staff, Musa Dadis Kamara has been found and taken back to prison without specifying the circumstances of Dadis' arrest. One of his lawyers says he is back behind bars. It was not clear whether Kamara had escaped from his own free will. Minister of Justice Alphonse Just Wright said earlier that well armed men burst into the prison and managed to leave with four prisoners, notably Captain Musa Dadis Kamara. He said the borders have been closed. He says it was around 5 in the morning when well-armed men broke into Conakry's main central prison. He says they succeeded in freeing four accused persons who are standing trial in September 28th stadium massacre. He says they include Captain Musa Dadis Kamara, former junta leader, Claude PV, former minister in charge of presidential security, Colonel Musa Cheburu Kamara, former minister in charge of the fight against drug trafficking and organized crimes at the presidency, has been arrested and they are now in the main central prison. The army described the operation as an attempt to sabotage government reforms and swear its unwavering commitment to the current military-led government. According to Musa Cheburu's lawyer, Jean Musa Sovogi, the well-armed attackers entered the prison yard shouting the name of Dadis Kamara. He said they declared that they had come to free Dadis. He says his client didn't escape from prison and he didn't run away either. He says, on the contrary, his client was kidnapped by unknown people. The prosecutor at the Court of Appeal says he has opened investigations into the jailbreak and against the four fugitives and their accomplices. Minister of Justice Alphonse Just Wright asked how the attackers broke past the prison guards needed to get into the prison yard. He says investigations have been launched to identify those who helped. He says when you look at the central prison, the warders are always in the yard. So how did this assailant break through the line of defense? The Minister of Justice Charles Wright also said Chaburu Kamara and other of the men taken from the prison had since been recaptured. The government has not yet issued statements on the incident and the number of people killed or wounded during the attack. At least two people were reported killed, including a six-year-old girl. That is, and about ten other former military and government officials are accused of a 2009 massacre carried out by security forces loyal to the then junta leader. The killing of 156 people and the rape of at least 109 women started at a political rally in a Conakry stadium on September 28. The East African community has hailed the U.S. move on the possible extension of the Agoa Trade Pact after a conference that ended on Saturday in South Africa. The U.S. Deputy Secretary of Commerce, Don Graves, says that the United States is committed to increased trade with Africa while engaging the African diaspora. Moses Javier Rimana reports. After almost a year now since the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit was held, the U.S. government says it has helped close to 75 new commercial trade deals with African countries. For a total estimated value of $5.7 billion U.S. dollars in two-way trade and investment through African Growth and Opportunity Act, the U.S. Deputy Secretary of Commerce Don Graves says that the United States is committed to boosting cooperation with private sector on the continent. Africa is poised for massive economic growth. Uh, it is the fastest growing continent in the world. That's why it's so important for us to be c well connected. We can tap into African diaspora in America, the more than 46 million people who trace their roots back to Africa. And uh, we want to be uh, true partners to make sure that our private sectors are working hand in hand. Africa wants the U.S. Congress to renew its flagship trade program for the continent for at least 10 years. John Bosco Kalisa is the CEO of the East African Business Council. 
it was really ex excellent uh, agreement in terms of uh, job creation, in terms of uh, contributing to our economic growth, in terms of uh, promoting those regional value chain, including the textile, laser, uh, arts and craft to access U.S. market. So that's why we've been pushing at the continental level as well as the regional level, ESC level, uh, to have AGOA extended post-2025. The U.S. President Joe Biden said he is considering omitting some African countries, including Uganda, a member of East African community. Uganda's relation with the U.S. deteriorated after Kampala passed the anti-homosexuality bill. Peter Matuki is the Secretary General of the East African community. It's in their own discretion to decide who to work with or who not to work with. You cannot really come and force anyone to work with whoever they don't want. And America is one of the largest democracies in the world. And they value a lot the voice of the people. And therefore, in this particular case, Uganda <coughs> listen to the voice of the people through their parliament. AGOA is a trade agreement that provides duty-free access to the U.S. market for special categories of products from eligible African countries. It has been accredited with boosting economic growth and creating jobs in Africa and the U.S. U.S. lawmakers and the Biden administration are backing the renewal of AGOA, which saw over $10 billion U.S. dollars worth of African exports enter the United States duty-free last year. Thousands of people demonstrated around the world on Saturday in support of Palestinians in the Gaza Strip hit by Israel bombing in retaliation for Hamas' bloody attack on October 7th. In Senegal, 200 supporters were gathered outside the Grand Mosque in Dakar with a Palestinian flag and placards denouncing a genocide going on. I'm here today as people are all over the world to call for a halt to the massacre of Palestinians in Gaza, to tell Israel to stop this massacre, to tell Israel that the children it's massacring have done nothing wrong, to tell Israel to respect international law. I'm not here as an Arab or a Muslim. I'm here as a human being because the atrocities that I have seen happening in Gaza I'm here today to support my people, to stop the apartheid, to stop the genocide, and to save the people of Gaza. Israel army has been conducting ground operations in parallel with its strikes, and on Sunday, it once again called the population to evacuate to protect themselves from fighting.